why is this so dusty? It's so dusty under here. I hate dust. Probably you hate dust too, and it's why you clicked on this video. You don't want it in your house. It's dirty, it gets in the air, it causes allergies. We don't want it. Additionally, when you're cleaning a surface that has a layer of dust on it, you actually end up kicking those dust particles back into the air. So the goal is to avoid accumulation in the first place. That's what we're doing today. I am sharing 10 easy ways to avoid dust in your home, to have a dust-free home, and I'm saving the two weirdest tips for last. I didn't mean to have two strange tips in here. I went down this whole rabbit hole on the internet and I found these two bizarre, you'll see what I mean. My house used to be so dusty and I thought it was because my home is really old. It's over a hundred years old. And when we first moved in here, it was a constant accumulation of dust. I would even dust one day and then the next day the dust would be back. But I've been employing the tips that I'm gonna share today and they have made a huge impact. Now I'm not saying you'll never dust again, that would be amazing, but trust me, if you do these tips, you're gonna notice a huge difference in your home. So fun fact, dust is actually made up of things like skin cells, dust mites, little carpet fibers, fiber, fibers from fabrics, pollen, you get the idea. Knowing this, you can imagine that one of the dustiest places in your home is in your bedroom because this is where you are spending eight to 10 hours of your day. And the other thing is bedrooms often have a lot of textiles. You will find things like your comforter and your sheets and your area rugs and your curtains and your throw pillows, maybe couches and other plush things. And these types of things generate a ton of dust. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is something that I know not everybody likes to do this often, but you are going to change your sheets weekly. If you can wash your sheets once a week, you're gonna cut down on those fibers that are then gonna be turning into dust in your room. If you only have one set of sheets, get a second pair. That way you can rotate it in your laundry. I will link the ones I have if you're looking for some really good soft bamboo sheets, I love mine. So washing things like pillows, bedspreads, all of that can really impact how much dust is in your home, but we don't wanna be washing our stuff all the time, right? That's a lot of work. So maybe consider if there are things you can pare down in your room. Can you have fewer throw pillows, fewer blankets? Really think about those soft fabrics and other textiles in your room that you might be able to pare down, thus eliminating some of the dust. Same thing in your living room. Couches and things like that, area rugs, even furniture that has grooves, these are all dust collectors and will pull that dust in. So consider things like maybe leather furniture, furniture with smooth surfaces rather than those grooves. This next tip is going to be very low effort. It may be one of the easiest tips on this list, but the majority of dust in your home actually comes from the outdoors. So knowing that you're gonna do two things. The first is you are gonna put a little area rug or a little mat outside of your door. Then you're gonna put a second one on the inside of your door in the entryway of your home where you walk in. The idea here is you're gonna wipe your feet off at the front door when you before you come into the house, maybe also do it a little bit when you get into the house, and that is going to eliminate a significant amount of the dust and dirt in your home. And if you're not doing this already, just be sure not to wear your shoes in the house. You definitely don't wanna wear your dirty shoes in your home and then undo all of the good work that you have done cleaning and getting rid of your dust. I'm just gonna show you this. Take a look at this. These are the sneakers that I wear all the time. They're, they looked, seemed clean. Look how dirty they are. I don't wanna wear these in my house. If you feel like you wanna wear shoes in the house, I totally get it. Just buy a set of shoes or a pair of shoes that you only wear indoors. That way you're not getting all of this dust and dirt inside. By the way, most of you guys who watch my content are not subscribed. Go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It's free. This next tip is vacuuming. If you missed it, I recently did a podcast. It was amazing. I did a podcast with Cass from Clutterbug. I will link a card up on the screen here so you can see it. We actually talked about vacuuming and I learned this little interesting tip and I'm gonna share it with you. We know that vacuuming removes dust, right? But what Cass was saying is that the majority of dust that you find on the surfaces in your home is comes from the floor. So every time you walk around, you're kicking that dust up, you're getting those dust particles into the air, and then they settle on your surfaces. She said she recently moved into her new home and when they did, it was super, super dusty and they didn't know why. What she finally figured out is that it needed a ton of vacuuming because there was just so much dust on the floor from the move, maybe from the previous owners. So she ended up getting a robot vacuum. I'm gonna recommend this to you if you don't have one. I love mine. And she got this vacuum and she was running it every day for weeks straight. And by the end of that, her house is much less dusty with much less upkeep. If you don't like a robot vacuum, some people don't, 
that's fine, but I would definitely urge you to get some sort of vacuum cleaner that you can use to vacuum those high traffic areas daily, like your entryway, maybe your kitchen, living room, just the areas where people are moving around and getting a lot of dust and dirt into your home. I'm gonna recommend a vacuum cleaner to you guys. This is not sponsored or anything like that, but I was sent this Butur vacuum cleaner, and I know that I, I have the Shark, and I really like it, but I know it's very pricey. So if you are looking for an affordable option, I'm definitely highly recommending this. I was very surprised by how much I liked it. Just quickly, four reasons why. Number one is it is super light, so it's a lot lighter than my Dyson, so I can push it around easier. I also love that it has a light on it, so I can see what I'm vacuuming. And it doesn't have a clunky docking station like my Dyson does. It has a little cord. You can just plug it right in. And when you push the power down with the Dyson, you have to hold the power button down while you're vacuuming. With this one, you just push it once and it stays on. And then the last reason, which I actually think this is now five reasons, but it has this light up panel that shows you how much battery you have left. I always get surprised with my Dyson because the battery just suddenly dies in the middle of my vacuuming. So at least with this vacuum cleaner, I can see how much battery I'm working with. While we have our vacuum cleaner out, another thing that we're gonna do that is going to make a huge impact on the dust in our home is we are going to vacuum. And this is one place that I often forget and I look at them from time to time and they, they're they so dusty. You're gonna vacuum those vent grills. These are the areas in your home where it's pulling in, constantly pulling in air and it's pulling the dust in and then you'll get that layer of dust. If you don't keep those clean and if you don't vacuum them, unfortunately the dust is just gonna be blowing all throughout your house. So just when you're vacuuming, just reach up, vacuum those grills. It's an easy thing to do, but it's definitely something we all forget. So we've talked a lot about vacuuming, but one of the things that vacuuming does do, and I will admit this, is it does kick up dust into the air. Every time you vacuum that dust particles, they're just very tiny and they will go get into the air and you'll be breathing them. So what I'm gonna recommend here is all about mopping your floors. If you have non-carpeted floors, the mop is the way to go because that wet mop will pick up all of that dust. It will stick to the mop. You can rinse it down the drain. It is so much better. I urge you, if you have allergies or anything like that, to really think about how many carpets and area rugs that you have in your home because, again, those are just, they're trapping the allergens in there. And then when you vacuum them, they do get kicked up into the air on some level. Just something to think about. I'm not telling you to throw away your carpets if you love them, but just something to consider if you ever have problems with allergies. This next one is one that you may not have thought of and the only reason why I thought of it was because my son, my oldest son, ended up having allergies and it was really affecting him and I started looking for doing some research and figuring out something that I can do and I ended up finding this air filter. I'll link the one that I have. You can get any air filter though. It's just something that I wouldn't have thought of because every home has an air filter built into your HVAC unit. I just find that this extra addition of this filter really keeps our air looking fresh and clean. And I know it's working because I end up cleaning it and it has a lot of stuff in it. I also find it to be very low maintenance. I don't have to change the replaceable filter very often, but it seems to be making a big difference with my son's allergies and really freshening the air in our home. This is one I talk about a lot on my channel, but I find that this also makes a big difference. When I was a kid, my job was dusting. I think that's the reason why I hate dusting so much, but I had to dust our living room, our family room, and I, I just hated it. I've come to realize the reason why I hate doing it is because my parents had so many little knickknacks. Sorry if you're watching, you guys had a ton of knickknacks. I would have to remove each and every one. And, and maybe it wouldn't be such a big deal for an adult, but when you're like eight years old and you're having to remove all these delicate knickknacks and then dust and then put them all back, it's not easy. So my tip here is have less clutter. The less clutter you have, the less of a dust magnet you're going to have in your home, the less you're going to have to deal with it. This next one is so simple. It's probably my second easiest one, but it's to keep your windows closed when it's windy out. I mentioned a lot of the dirt and dust in your home comes from the outdoors. Well, same thing with the window. A big tip that they recommend to people is sealing the cracks and crevices in your home, which yes, you can do. That may be a little bit more difficult. Today we're talking really simple, easy hacks just shut your window. That will prevent dust and dirt blowing into your home and really make a big impact. You may not think so, but it really will. Especially now where I am, there's so much pollen in the air. I park my car and it looks clean. I come out the next morning and it's got like a layer of pollen on it. Okay, now we're to the strange ones. I did a lot of research to th for this video and, and I, I came across these two ones and I was like, you know what? These are weird, but they make a lot of sense. This tip is to, to eliminate dust in your home, exfoliate and moisturize your skin more frequently. 
sounds strange, but it actually really does seem like that could work. So get yourself a body brush, use a loofah. Your skin cells are flaking off all the time anyway, so why not flake them off in the shower, wash them down the drain, maybe contribute to less dust in your home. Just try it, see if it works. And then this last one. So this is primarily related to dust in the bathroom, but I find that my bathroom gets very dusty. So I'm gonna make a suggestion that may be a bit controversial. I know people feel very strongly about toilet paper. I know I do. I have a very specific brand of toilet paper that I like the best. Let me know in the comments below if you have a brand that you like the best because I know that people get very divided on the thinner toilet paper or the thicker plush toilet paper. But like I said, when I did this research, I found that a lot of people seem to feel like and agree that the thicker plusher toilet paper creates dust in your bathroom. And then if you have tissue boxes sitting out or rolls of toilet paper sitting out, I mean, it does make sense. Think about it. These are quickly degrading. They're getting into the air. They're contributing to the dust. Anyway, something to think about. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna link a video. Go ahead and click on it and I will see you over there. Bye-bye. Those cobwebs?